Hi guys, welcome here to this leak where today we're talking about yeast nutrients. Now, yeast nutrients is a powder. It looks like this, comes in a little bag of 100 grams, um, and obviously you can buy it in bulk as well. But what's the point of a yeast nutrient? Why do we need a yeast nutrient? Now, any of you who've already done training with us here at this leak, um, either online or in-house, um, even if you've just done the introduction to distilling course, uh, the C1 course, you would know that yeast requires certain nutrients in order to function properly, what we refer to as the macro and the micronutrients. Now, without going into a whole lesson here as to why it's important, what the different nutrients are and what they do, it basically boils down to this, that in order to have a good fermentation, a happy fermentation, you need happy yeast. And happy yeast needs food. And that is what the yeast nutrients is. It's the food that the yeast requires in order to function properly. Now, a lot of recipes that you're going to find on the internet, a lot of recipes shared on internet groups, uses alternatives to yeast nutrients. Some people use tomato paste, some people use marmite, uh, some people use raisins, um, all kinds of things that's, uh, that's added in. Now, yes, some of these improvisations do help, they do work. Uh, tomato paste, for instance, uh, TPW, tomato paste wash, very, very popular. And I'm not probably going to be very popular for saying this. But yes, tomato paste do provide some of the nutrients required for the yeast to operate. But it doesn't require uh, provide all the nutrients that's required. So there is still some lacking there. Now, yes, it ferments. It will ferment because most of the macronutrients are present. But the yeast needs all its nutrients in order to function properly. Now for people doing a TPW wash, it's normally just a sugar water fermentation. That's all it is. So sugar, water, yeast, and uh, tomato paste. That's all it is. So all they're trying to distill at the end is a neutral spirit. They just normally distill very, very high using a, a T500 or an adjustable reflux column still or something like that. And all they want is the alcohol out at the end, which they can then use as a base to either add a flavorant or turn into a liqueur or turn into a gin or do something else with it. And if that's what you want to do, that's fine. Go ahead, do it. It's absolutely no problem. But if you want to make a flavorful product, if you want to make an eau de vie, a brandy, a, uh, a whiskey or something like that, where you actually want to taste the raw material, you need to keep two things in mind. That A, that tomato paste you're adding in there will have an effect on the flavor profile of the product you're making. And B, you need the yeast to produce the flavor compounds that it, that it normally produces. Why did you choose that yeast? I actually just now, as we were recording this video, had a conversation online with one of the clients and he wanted to know but why choose one yeast over another. Now, in our yeast videos that you'll see, we're going to be making videos of all our different yeasts that, uh, that we stock. Each yeast generates a different flavor profile. We don't just choose a yeast because it can reach a certain amount of alcohol. If you're making a sugar water fermentation and you just want yield, that's fine. And that's the only reason why you would choose that yeast is because it gives you a certain amount of alcohol. But if you're making a flavorful product, if you're making a brandy, a whiskey, a bourbon, a rum, you want certain flavors in the final product. And you choose your yeast accordingly. You choose your yeast because it creates certain what we call congeners or long chain flavor and aroma molecules that's formed during the fermentation process. And you want that in the final product. Now, in order for the yeast to do that, that yeast needs to be happy. It needs to be in ideal circumstances. And that means you need the right uh, mix of nutrients. Both the micro and the macronutrients, you need that in there. Other alternatives, raisins, for instance, I'll be honest with you, I can't remember the exact figures now, but yes, raisins do give some nutrients, but the amount of raisins you need to make an impact in terms of what the yeast requires to provide enough of that nutrients works out to about a cup on every five liters. So 250 grams on every five liters, if not more. I think I'm actually uh, on the low side now. If you do the calculation, if you Google it a little bit and you see what nutrients is actually in raisins and how much the yeast needs of those nutrients, you'll figure out it's completely impractical. You're going to need so many raisins in there to make any contribution in terms of the uh, nutrients that the yeast requires it doesn't make sense to use it. Another one sometimes used, olive oils. 
yes, olive oil, olive oil does have, um, my memory fails me now, there is a, a, a type of uh, amino acid in there that does contribute to the yeast. But again, it's such a minimal contribution that you get from the olive oil. You have to add so much in there to make any difference. It's not feasible. It does not make sense. So yeast nutrients, easy to use, relatively cheap. You just add one gram of yeast nutrient for every gram of yeast. It's equal amounts of yeast and yeast nutrient. You're never going to have a failed fermentation because of a lack of nutrients. And you will always have the flavor profile that you want from the yeast that you're using.